I mean, I thought I was doing a little something when I came up with my wife as my A, B, C, D, my adorable brown caramel delight. And, and then I said, okay, baby, <clears throat> I got another A, B, C, D, and that's angelic blessed, you know, chocolate delicacy. And, you know, I like to tell her your eyes are like caramels floating upon saucers of milk. And when I'm in your arms, everything's okay. But this brother, oh, my goodness, this brother Ty, Gray L is his name. He, as a matter of fact, one of his pieces, I used one of his pieces and uh, put a bunch of pictures of my wife um, and last Valentine's Day, as a matter of fact, and presented that to her as one of the <clears throat> many things I did for her. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was writing a special piece for a book called The Woman's Worth, I'm one of the contributors. And um, and I said, you know, I had to call this brother. Maybe I ought to put part of that his piece in here. Let me get permission. Let me find, so I went to find his number. And you know what? I just need to call him. Let him know I appreciate it. And then it just turned into you know a God thing. And so today we have him on the call. And I want you to get something to write with, something to write on. Tell your folks they want to hear. So this brother's internationally renowned storyteller. He's an author, recording artist, dedicated to restoring the heritage and legacy. Africans in America. He's the first design poet laureate for the 200-year history of the AME Church, and he earned a BS in streetology from the District of Columbia, a master's degree in survival in the ghettos of North America, and a PhD in psychology from the University of Adversity in Hard Knocks. And so some people laugh at his academic achievements, having once been labeled ineducable. Listen carefully. He is a proud of his accomplishments as any holding degrees from Howard, Harvard, or Yale. He's an author. He's an activist. He's a lecturer, an entrepreneur, a husband, a proud father of four, and rising from the condition of being labeled ineducable to becoming the author of several books and screenplays and being called by some the vessel to which our ancestors speak. Ty, as a lecturer and storytelling, has appeared on the Michael Bazin Show, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, the Russ Parr Morning Show, WE, the, the Network, Cirrus XM Radio, as well as featured in the Washington and former in Washington Post newspapers. He's a two-time spoken word billboard award winner, and his soon-to-be-released spoken word album, Televise, Devolution, has Grammy written all over it. He confronts the issues of racism and bigotry with poetic compassion, dramatic storytelling, and historical fact while weaving a tapestry of tolerance and hope. His presentations are a slice of lecture, a slice of poetry, and a bit of theater that all come together like grandmom's sweet potato pie. So the next voice you hear is going to be that that's going to razzle, that's going to dazzle, that's going to enlighten, that's going to uplift, that's going to encourage, and make you have the best Valentine's Day beginning. Ty Grayell, welcome to the Uplift Leadership Call, my brother. <laughs> God bless you, my brother. Oh, my God. That was the, I, I don't know if I can follow that. that. That was the most breakthrough introduction I have ever heard. God bless you. <laughs> oh, man. And, and God bless the Uplift fam, uh, family. I just want to uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Smith, for having me on, and thank you for what you're doing in the community, man. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really just grateful to uh, be in you guys' company this morning. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. clear. Yes, yes. Hello. Yeah. Loud oh, and I just clear. wanted to make sure because it's, I heard something about being unmo unmuted, and I wasn't sure whether I was uh, still muted. So thank you. <laughs> Doctor, man, Doctor Stan, I'm not sure that I can follow all of that, but I will do my best. So anyway, um, he today being Valentine's Day, um, my coach and, and mentor now, uh, Doctor Stan told me to focus on uh, love issues, and so that's a, it's a little bit it's not difficult for me, but it's not really my lane. My lane is is uh, historical uh, fiction and uh, African history. And so that's basically my focus. But I have a few pieces. So my wife asked me what I wanted for Valentine's Day. I looked at her long and hard, and it dawned on me 
that the first moment I ever saw her, I knew exactly what I wanted. So this short piece is entitled Wanted. She was brown, not your mediocre brown, but a luscious, cocoa, cinnamon, delicious, Hershey, uncommercialized brown, a honey caramel swirl, a chocolate dream, deep, creamy, and unblemished. She radiated smooth, emitted majesty. Regal oozed out of her pores. Her confidence wafted across continents. Her intelligence was absolutely intoxicating. And the moment I saw her, I knew brown, black she was, African she was, angel she was, queen she was, woman she was. She was all I ever wanted. Happy Valentine's Day, sweetie. So, <laughs> so that's, Whoa. that's what I wrote my wife said Valentine's Day this morning. <laughs> oh my Y'all better text somebody. Y'all better call somebody. Y'all y'all hear what's coming down. Come on, brother. Come on, man. And I know you did a piece about wedding vows. Um that matter of fact, when we renew our vows, we're gonna have you come and do it. If we gonna I'm gonna try to say it or something, man, but all right, bro. I'm let. Come on, let me turn you loose, man. I, matter of fact, I'm putting another post on Facebook telling folks they better jump on now. Don't miss the love. <laughs> Take it away, bro. Okay. Well, um, um, my my marriage vow. So I, I have to set it up just a little bit, uh, Pastor. My um, I was raising my sons by myself, and um, their mother just she just wasn't in the picture after they were. Uh, four and five years old, respectively, they're 17 months apart. And so I started praying for a help meet. I, I mean, I got on my knees and prayed. I cried. I begged. I, I petitioned. I prayed incessantly all day, all night long. And I met a lady. And after meeting her, after about seven or eight months of meeting her, it dawned on me one night that God had answered my prayers because he's a prayer answer. So this, these are my actual wedding vows, and this is how it actually happened. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. I have this woman on the brain. My God, tell me what's happening. Can you please explain? Well, son, seems you've been praying, and you've called me by my name, and the prayers that you've been saying, call this woman, and she came. My God, dear Lord, sweet Jesus, just what are you saying? Are you really trying to tell me she's the result of all my praying? What I'm saying, child, is be careful what you pray for, because I'm in the prayer business, and I'll supply your needs and more. And this woman is the answer to all that you desire, but to win her heart forever, let me tell you what she requires. She has to have affection. You must show how much you care. So run the comb of kindness and your fingers through her hair. Remember to hold her hand and look her in her eyes. Tell her every day she's your God-given prize. Hug and squeeze her often and shower her with kisses. Make her understand she is the answer to your wishes. Tell her every morning how much you adore her then spend the rest of your day proving, doing, working for her. Now, this is most important. Continue worshiping me, and I will guarantee you, you'll be as happy as can be. Now, to whom much is given, much is always required. And this woman is the answer to all that you desire. Cherish her. These are the words God put on my heart. These words I shall live by till death do us part. Good God Almighty. <laughs> coach, coach, coach. Is the queen about to faint right now? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Show me, show me up real bad, though. You show me up real bad, though. I'm, I'm lacking here. <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. See, this is the Valentine's Day. See, so we bought them on so he could represent us. 
and uh, and that's going to be something that for us to live by. That's powerful, brother. That's powerful, man. Thank amen, you. Amen. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So I, we got to hear thank some more, though, brother. brother. We got to, I, I just sent another post on <laughs> Facebook, man. Give me some more. People are down there now. Give me some more. Come on. <laughs> well, um, when, when we talk about uh, treating our women the way they should be treated, uh, it, it's imperative that we understand that we actually have a mandate. And so you mentioned that I was the, 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 I'm actually the first poet laureate in the 200-year history of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, I, I wrote a poem for Men's Day, um, and uh, the poem is entitled One Man. So I'll, I'll share it because we, this is what we have to be, I believe, in order for us um, to get to to the other side, to get to paradise in order for us to succeed, we have to be this one man. Um, as a matter of fact, I consider you coaches one in a million. So it's called one man. If one man would make up his mind to everyone he meets, be kind, and fix his heart on that which is true, if one man would be so bold as to embrace the gospel and hold, just think what a million men could do. If one man changed his thought each time the tempter brought some selfish scheme that would his neighbor undo, if he thought for just a minute, just where is the kindness in it? Just think what a million thoughts like that could do. If David could slay that giant, so huge and extremely defiant, and Solomon had the wisdom to think things through. If Shadrach could walk through fire and his entire village inspire, just think what a million Shadrachs could do. If Noah could build that ark, though some folk thought it a lark, and Jesus, Jesus could cure those deaf and blind men too. If Samson's stress was that of 10 ordinary men, just think what a million Samson could do. If one man would take a second when his needy neighbor beckoned and followed literally literally his demand, he still spilled and nourished, our neighborhoods would flourish. How quickly peace would spread throughout this land. If one man, one man made up his mind to no matter what, be kind no matter what others might put him through, the strength of that one man's resolve would all our problems solve and just think what a million men like that could do. And so when wait, I shared wait, that piece, when, when I shared wait, that wait, wait, piece, wait, wait, coach. Wait, 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 bro, wait, wait, wait. Don't go too fast. <laughs> Don't go too fast. Because, <laughs> see, that's, that's oh, really what the whole is all about, this community that we're building of people that want to uplift each other. And so, you know, a lot of times on Valentine's Day, it's just always about the women, but yet we got some faithful men and we got, and so that's, that's a, that's a minute to, for the, uh, for the women, the, the women that literally say, I'm honoring the faithful man that I have. And so, um, so that's for you, my brothers. Okay. Now we, you know, we got to come back to the sisters. Come on, man. Well, the, the, <laughs> what's, what's funny about what you just said is that I shared that at a, at a, um, um, men's program at the church and there was a sister there, an elder, uh, and she, she came up to me afterwards. She said, listen, don't come back to this church unless you have one woman when you come back. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm laughing. She said, I'm not playing. You got to write one woman. So I said, oh, yes, ma'am. And so as a result of her uh, admonishing me and giving me instruction, I wrote this piece called One Woman. If one woman made up her mind to everyone she meets, be kind and fix her heart on that which is true. If one woman would be so bold as to embrace the gospel and hold, just think what a million women could do. If one woman changed her thought each time the tempter brought some selfish scheme that would her neighbor undo if she thought for just a minute, 
Just where is the kindness in it? Just think what a million thoughts like that could do. If Sarah could wait all those years and God dried her barren tears and the widow Naomi, her tears dried too. If Boaz could depend on Ruth to faithfully tell him the truth, just think what a million Ruth could do. If Esther could find good reason to stay patient throughout her season in Bathsheba is how Solomon came through. If Deborah, the prophetess judge, could face her enemies and not budge, just think what a million Deborahs could do. If cousins Elizabeth and Mary could each miraculously carry both John and Savior Jesus too, if Martha's belief in what Jesus said raised Lazarus from his deathbed, just think what a million Martha's could do. If one woman would take a second when her needy neighbor beckoned and followed literally Moses' tenth command, with spirits filled and nourished, our neighborhoods would flourish and how quickly peace would spread throughout this land. If one woman made up her mind to no matter what, be kind no matter what others might put her through, the strength of that one woman's resolve would all our problems solve and just think what a million women like that could do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Co coach 100K, man. Coach, coach, coach. Oh, oh, oh. A million women. <laughs> uh, what about a million of that? Million. Come on, somebody. Just think that that is the power that that uplifts <laughs> right here. Shock, shock. <laughs> yeah, God is good, man. God is God is just God is just good. When we're talking about uh, women, man, um, I was raised uh, by my mother and my grandmother, and my grandmother used to say, uh, you, "Well, she just put a profound uh, respect for women." in me. I mean, uh, you know, I, I hear some of these brothers lost and talking about they don't respect their women and you know, they, I, mean, I, I just it just makes me cringe because it, it hurts my heart because I, I know that we, that we don't, none of us are here. Not even, not one of us. Not even our Lord and Savior escaped the, coming through a woman in the woman's womb. So I um, just have so much of an appreciation for my grandmother used to say this, uh, uh, pastors, both of you guys. So she used to say that a, a woman, you have to be very, very careful of a woman because a woman can be fickle. And I was like, oh, she said, and I want you to understand something, that a man chases a woman until she catches him. You don't do anything. She said, a man chases a woman until she catches him. And she said, never sleep on a woman. And I want you to understand something else. A woman is opportunity. And she used to always refer to a woman as opportunity. So um, maybe 30 years after uh, she passed away, I wrote this piece <laughs> remembering that the, a, a man chases a woman until she catches him, and that a woman was opportunity. It dawned on me how right she was, and I wrote this short piece called Opportunity. I gazed at opportunity as she walked into the place, but instead of me embracing her, I laughed right in her face. Nevertheless, she flirted. In spite of my naivete, she said, so you learn to love me and come to bless this day. But alas, I was a youngster, all brash and full of self. I chose to throw her jewels in the closet on a shelf. And I shut the door behind me, walked away from fortune good, and chose to dance with chance, whom I never understood. But opportunity is patient as tolerant as can be, and neither she nor my creator was yet quite through with me. So she, along with destiny, came 
a knocking yet once more. This time I was happy to see her standing at my door. So I guess if there's a moral somewhere lurking around this rhyme, it's that if when first you meet her, you should hug her that first time. But if at first you fail pursuing opportunity, remember she's a lady and the lady catches thee. I said, remember, she's a lady and the lady catches thee. Wow. 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 Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, so, yeah, um, 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 I just, uh, the whole Uplift team, I just want you to know I, my ministry is poetry. I, I go around to the churches and different civic, civic organizations and companies, and I, I do, you know, I minister through poetry. My poetry has, has become a ministry to me, and uh, I have 70 pieces of poetry in my head. I cannot. I may I may not remember your name, but for some reason God puts these these words in my head, and uh, you know I'm I'm reminded of uh, um, Proverbs 16 and 24, where it said that pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bone. I said, wait a minute, hold it, Solomon, a, a poet, and so I started to emulate myself after that once I read that verse. So wow, wow, yeah, <laughs> man, oh man, well, man, it's getting time close to the time. I, man, time is flying when you're having fun. So, bro, yeah. I, I didn't know if we could the 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 smile piece, or we gotta we may have to come back. I don't know, man, but it's just, I don't know if the time would allow you. Uh, what do you think? Well, I man, for me, I mean, this is man, I'm I'm having fun. This is I'm I'm doing my God given job. So I'm having fun. <laughs> and so for me, you know, I, I'm 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 good with whatever you it's up to you what time you have. All righty. Well then tell the story briefly and let's close out with that that, that one. because um, that's the one I used last Valentine's Day, uh the smiling piece. Uh, especially at the end, talking about my wife. So let's get it live. Uh, and, oh, and you talking that's... about a black woman smile? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, I have to set this up a little bit so so the, so the sisters will understand where uh, I'm coming from. I was at a light in Washington D.C. It's a three lane street, and this. I'm in the far left lane. This very attractive sister pulls up in the middle lane, and this brother pulls up on the right, and he blows his horn at her. And when she blew his horn, I looked, because at the same time he blew his horn, I didn't know he was blowing it. I looked, and she looked over at him, and he was giving her some googly eyes. And she looked at that brother and, and rolled her eyes and looked back and had such a look of disgust on her face. She did that thing that only black women do. I never seen anybody else but black women do that thing with all their neck. Like she was thoroughly disgusted. And so it dawned on me that black women really don't smile as often as other ethnic groups of women. And it also dawned on me several reasons why. And so, uh, you know, thinking about my mothers and my grandmothers and all the women that have been in my life. I, it just dawned on me that I needed to write this piece called A Black Woman Smile. Do you know how strong you have to be to make a black woman smile? Do you have any idea what an accomplishment that is? Because she has borne the weight of this country on her back for 400 years. She's been carrying the load of America in her belly since its infancy. She has suffered the agony of unassisted husbandless child rearing since the 1600s. Have you any idea how much strength it takes to put a smile on her face? You need the strength of Samson, the nerve of Joshua, and the courage of David facing Goliath, because she has cultivated in her womb the marvel of the universe, only to have her hopes and dreams aborted 
and her aspirations show up dead on arrival. She's given birth to kings and queens and delivered on her majestic promise, only to see her children kidnapped and sold to a criminal with no respect for her royalty. If you can make a black woman smile, you are a miracle worker. Imagine breastfeeding your child in Virginia and having him snatched from your arms, then branded, hijacked to Louisiana, and publicly fondled on a New Orleans auction block. If the memory of that pain was locked bound in your DNA, would you be smiling? If you breastfed someone else's child only to watch her grow old enough to call you darky, pickaninny, and nappy-headed jigaboo, you wouldn't be smiling either. If you can make a black woman smile, you have done something. If you can make her smile, you are stronger than Atlas, because God knows she has been. She's been raped, ravaged, and scorned, and nearly annihilated. She's been pimped, pummeled, and stoned, and deliberately depreciated. She has cooked and cleaned and sewn and never been compensated. She's been forced to watch the offspring of her loins mangled and maligned across centuries. Her character has been continuously smeared, assassinated over and over and over, again and again and again. You ever thought about how strong you have to be just to be a black woman? She's had to make brick without straw. After being stripped of all her customs, all her culture, and all her traditions, no other woman in the history of the civilized world has gone through what she's gone through. No other being on this planet has endured what she has endured. She's been chastised, criticized, demonized, and terrorized. She's had to stand when her man was bull whipped for trying to stand. She's had to stand when her man was castrated for trying to stand. She's had to stand when her man was hung by his neck for trying to stand. She's had to carry her man because every time he tried to carry himself, he was murdered for trying to do so. Ask Betty Shabazz about Malcolm. Ask Coretta Scott King about Martin. Ask Emmett Till's mother. Ask Trayvon Martin's mother. If you can make a black woman smile, you have achieved something. Since 1619, when we came in chains, the entire world's been messing with her brain, disrespecting her, calling her out of her name, and she's tired, just plain Fannie Lou Hamer, tired, tired of being called B-words and H-words and N-words and other words and everything except the child of God that she is. But there is one thing in this world that will make a black woman smile, and that's her man, a real man. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, she'll smile. She'll smile regularly and gladly. So man up, my brother, man up. Make your woman smile. Treat her like the queen that she is. She deserves it. She deserves it. And recognize this, in all of God's creation, there is nothing more alluring, more appealing or attractive. There's nothing more beautiful. There's nothing more charming, more charismatic or captivating. Nothing more delightful. There's nothing more elegant or exquisite. Nothing more fascinating. Nothing more gorgeous. There's nothing more inspiring, more intoxicating or invigorating. There is nothing more magnificent, nothing more lovely than a black woman's smile. Good God Almighty. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And folks, I tell you what, I got a simple number I want you to write down. And uh, you can get his V card that has his information that will come directly to your text. And maybe uh, Pastor Kenny, we will send this out to the field as well. But 808. Eight zero zero. So eight zero eight zero zero, and you just text B O M A, B O M A. Breath of my ancestors, 
And when you do that, it I mean, I did that, and this beautiful V card comes. And so all of his information, 80800. So you're going to text the number 80800, and then just put B-O-M-A in the subject line. B-O-M-A, breath of my ancestors. And you'll get his number. You'll get how to get all of his information. And by the way, so we're going to bring him back tomorrow.